Good morning. How's everybody today? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Anointed, appointed? Praise God. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, if this is your day. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good? All the time. Amen. Even when we're boneheads, he's still good. Amen. Well, think, how many of y'all know that we're in the last days? If you don't, you don't now. Last days. How many of y'all know that the powers of darkness are increasing on the earth? Amen. That means God is pouring out more of his anointing. That means that even temptation will be harder. Amen. We are being pressed in every side, in every area. But that's okay because God is testing his children, exposing everything, bringing us out so we can become that headless military, he's called. Amen? So that we're not living out of our head, but out of the spirit. So in that, there's something. I was discussing something with the Lord a couple days ago. And when I was in, in New York ministering there, something hit me all over again. And it was like the Lord was quite giving me a question. He was like asking me, why do my people backslide? Why do they vote for the things that um, they shouldn't be voting for? Why are they promoting, why are they associating with people they shouldn't be associating with? Why are they giving money to and purchasing things they shouldn't be purchasing? Why are they doing, I was like, I was just overwhelmed with all these questions. I said, okay, why? Why? And he said, because their soul is not completely converted. It hasn't reached the level of conversion. And he began to show me all individuals. I didn't know who they were. Just areas of reacting instead of responding. He said they haven't reached the level of conversion to overcome. And when they do reach it, they allow the enemy to steal it. Or steal parts of it. And he said to me, that means that there's a delay or loss of conversion. Everyone say, delay or loss, delay or loss. Of, conversion. of conversion. So we're going to talk about delayed conversion today. He says, when this happens, it shatters the soul. Conversion, conversion of what? The soul. So there's a delay of law or loss of conversion. There's a delay. And, you know, it, that's why that recycles, individuals recycling things. Sometimes they're fine one day and miserable the next day. That's why they're associating with people they shouldn't, and the next day they go, oh, I shouldn't, but then they, can't have, they don't have control over it. Because if you don't have control over your members, someone does. Amen? I want to go to Ephesians 4 first before we get started here. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. Delayed conversion. Let's speak it together. Is everybody there? Ephesians 4 verse 11. You know, remember that Jesus never came to bring religion. Amen? So we have to stop thinking about religious things. He came to establish a military to combat what has been taken from him. Remember, he gave the earth to his people, and his, earth, his people lost it. So God is on a mission to restore what the enemy stole from him. Amen? Amen? And so he's sending his body into the world to restore what the devil stole. But first, he had to go take away the keys of death, hell, and the grave and turn the keys of the kingdom over to his children so they would have authority. But there's a process in this. You know, we have a complete teaching called the process of conversion. It's good to listen to it. So in this, in verse 11, he said, He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. For what? 
equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. In other words, this is Holy Ghost Boot Camp Officers Training School. God is training up warriors, not religious people. There's enough of that. For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the what? Unity of the faith. That means like-minded. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. To a what? Perfect man or woman. <clears throat> to the measure of the stature of the what? Fullness of Christ. In other words, to the level of the anointing is the converting of the soul so that you overcome everything. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up. Everyone say grow up. So if your soul's not a process of conversion, can you grow up? No, you will stay immature. And grow up in all things and into him who is the head, Christ. From whom the whole body joined and knit together <clears throat> by which every joint supplies, that means cooperates, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. I want you to understand that something called the word work, it's not about going out and working, knocking on doors. It's got nothing to do. Work means cooperate. Amen? In if, if, uh, Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> Oh, happy days. Philippians 2, verse 1. Hallelujah. Is it hot in here? Always. Amen. <laughs> right answer. <laughs> Praise God. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. <laughs> Delayed conversion. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. Like Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. That means you've got to deny yourself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. And let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being founded in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth. That means demons also. Amen? And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Remember, a demon is nothing but a disembodied spirit. It is a lifeless spirit. It has an influence, but it's still considered a lifeless spirit looking for a life so it can fulfill its mission. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absent. Work out. Everyone say work out. Amen. Your own salvation. Now work out means to what? Cooperate. Amen. With fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And do all things without what? Complaining and disputing. Why? Because these are things that will affect your conversion or delay it that you may become blameless and harmless children of God 
without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. To be like-minded happens when, the, when we have reached a level or, uh, of conversion in the soul. There must be a level that everyone is trying to reach. You know, we call, there's a, a level called the master's level. Amen? We call it the third level. Can you imagine if the body was in one accord? Amen. Oh, my gosh. There wouldn't be all of the stupid stuff happening. You know, you wonder, I, I don't understand why people who are called believers are still promoting the left. It, it just blows me a wine. How, how can you promote abortion and perversion? You cannot be a believer. It's impossible. And if you approve those things, God ain't going to let you home anyways. Amen? You can't get in because blood's on the hand. It's amazing to me. And how many people I run across who call themselves Christians. I, I, it just baffles me. And because of that baffle that's been in me, I believe that's why the Lord brought me to the place and he, said, he started asking me these questions. Why do people do what they do when they know they shouldn't? Lack of conversion. Or the conversion is being delayed or stolen. Why? How does that start with lack of cooperation? Oh, hallelujah. We must work out, cooperate until a level of conversion is met or the mind of Christ is reached, hmm. then we must maintain that conversion. Amen? In Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36. Delayed or lost conversion. Verse 22. Oh, hallelujah. Training for reigning. This is not a Bible study. This is a training session. <clears throat> Verse 22, let's speak it. Therefore, says the, say to the house of Israel. When he talks about the house of Israel, is he also talking to us? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed. When I am what? Hallowed in you before their eyes. In other words, when I am expressed through you, when I am honored, when people see the fear of the Lord on you. Verse 24, I will take you from among the nations and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. Every one of us is from another nation. Amen? Our ancestors come back from all over. We've immigrated here correctly. <laughs> We're not illegal. Hello. Or Legitimate, illegitimate. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Verse 24. For I'll take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your idols, which are damaging to your soul. I will give you a what? A new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a new a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep them and do, and do my judgments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave you and sent you to of your fathers. You will, shall be my people, and I will be your God. And then I will what? Deliver you from all of your uncleanness. 
I will call for the grain and multiply it and bring no famine upon you. That's prosperity, isn't it? And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase your fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. Now, this is powerful. And this is something that has got to be understood. Listen, he said, I'm going to give you a new heart. Why? See, your heart is the core of your being. It is the core of your being. Your heart is in between your spirit and your soul. Grab hold of this and get a picture of this. Why? Because it is the character of your spirit. What your heart expresses is what you are. It is the core of your being. So without conversion of the soul, amen, conversion into the mind, will, and desires of Christ, you can't interpret what God's trying to say. And without conversion of the soul, your heart can't become pure. Now, I want you to grab hold of this. Uh, hold on a second. We'll get to it. <laughs> it's not time to release this one yet. So we need a new heart, a new spirit, right? His spirit, the Holy Spirit now, because we have a new spirit, is with our spirit. Amen? So he's speaking to our spirit. He's speaking to us. If the soul is not converted, it cannot interpret nor understand. That's why people live a life of confusion or emotionally up and down. If the soul is not converted, they live a life out of the soul and not out of the spirit. So their life is always associated with how they feel. See, there's too much soulless ministry and not enough the ministry of the spirit. People don't even realize what love is. It's a choice. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost is the love of God. It's not an emotional control. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. With conversion of the soul, <clears throat> we become like-minded with Christ. Remember, your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, and imagination. And in your imagination is the window which you see in the spirit realm. That's why it's called image. If your soul is not converted, you can't see correctly, you can't hear correctly, and you can't interpret correctly. There's got to be a level of conversion. <laughs> Until all points of the character of Christ is expressed. Again, the spirit cover, we are covered, our spirit is covered by the Holy Spirit which speaks to us, and the soul must interpret the heart as the character of your spirit is the core to you. So when the soul is, when it's reached a level of conversion, there's a complete new creation. Amen? When the conversion begins to diminish, there's a process of decay. What happens then, the old man begins to dominate instead of the new man. Amen. Amen. There is no drive-through conversions, okay? It's a process. <laughs> That's why we go through trials and tribulations. The process is to convert the soul. Jesus said, come to me and what? Learn from me. So in the process of conversion, we are learning the things that please God, displease him. We're learning and discerning the powers of darkness and influence. Amen. We're learning God's time. In 1 Corinthians 13. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 13. Delayed and lost conversion. So is the enemy trying to do everything he can? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? He's doing everything he can to eliminate you, prevent you, delay you 
from your conversion, from a level of conversion for victory. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. First Corinthians 13, verse 11. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. In other words, when my soul reached the level of conversion, I put away these soulish things. For now we see in the mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. And now abide what? Faith. Now, I want to grab hold of something about faith because faith is your connection. Forever attached to the heavenlies. Amen? Faith is your connection. It's your connection to the throne of glory. And it's connected to your heart. That is called the spiritual umbilical cord. Hello. When you are born again, you are born by the Spirit from the throne of glory to your heart. Is everybody okay? Your heart is the core of your being. There's an attachment between the throne of glory and your heart and what flows from there and it is interpreted determines where your heart will be. Does everybody understand? He said, now abide faith. Why? Because faith is your connection. Hope is future. And love, which is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. The, these three, but the greatest of these is what? Love. And what is love? Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. That's God's love. It's not an emotional thing. When I was a child, I spoke, thought, understood, interpreted, and perceived and saw as a child, according to the old ways. But now that I'm connected, abiding, growing, maturing, and, con and transferring and conversion, becoming more and more like Christ, perception changes, understanding changes. Walking away from the old. In uh, Luke 8, Luke chapter 8, <clears throat> everybody okay? Luke chapter 8, you know, the word of God says forsake not to assemble. I can't emphasize that enough. These are things that will preventing connection. There's no lone ranger. None of us can make it on our own. Amen? Luke 8, 11. Let's speak it. Now the parable is this, said Jesus. The seed is the what? Word of God. Those by the wayside are, ones, are the ones who hear. Then the devil does what? comes and takes away the word out of their hearts. Out of their what? Hearts, because the word of God is used to convert the soul so that there's a correct interpretation. Why? Because when the soul is converted, as it's process conversion, it's purifying the heart. Somebody get it? Because now your character is different. It's becoming more like Christ. Lest they should believe and be what? Saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, so they're not grounded, who believe for a while, and in time of temptation, they do what? Fall away. Why? Because they haven't reached that level. So what he's expressing here is the enemy's going to attack in every way he can to prevent the process of conversion. And when you reach it, he's going to try to diminish it. Now, the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with what? Here we go. Cares, riches, and pleasures of life or of the world. And bring no fruit to maturity. In other words, it, there's a seed that's planted. The word is planted. They begin to grow, 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 but never reach it. They not 
reached that level. But the ones that fell on good ground, how can you maintain good ground if it's not constantly watered and fertilized? That's why he says forsake not to assemble. It doesn't get watered and fertilized at sports, work. Does everybody understand that? Movies and so forth, unless it's a Christian movie. Amen. People are still hearing. That. There was a guy, I, I was at a, uh, I went out to give an estimate at this place, at a house, and the guy was, it was a real blessing, praise God. He was a believer, we were talking about the Lord, and whenever we went in, he's blasting secular music. Immediately, the Lord quickened me, lack of conversion. 30-something years going to the same, he loves his church. I love my church. Bummer. Why don't you love Jesus more than your church? Do you understand the words that come on? Hey, how you doing today? I'm great. I'm real busy. What about Jesus? Lack of conversion. People want to speak about their jobs and all the other things they're doing besides what the Lord is doing. Lack of conversion. But the ones that fell on good ground, the ones that have been watered and fertilized because of assembling, because of praising, because of worshiping, because of feeding themselves with the word of God every day. This is good soil. They're the ones who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it. They do what? They keep it. They protect it. And bear fruit with what? Patience, endurance. They are not anxious for anything. They have reached the place of rest because they trust all the way through. See, when there's a lack of conversion, a person thinks, if I don't make it happen, no one will. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? The devil forces or, or focuses on delaying our conversion or comes to steal the converted to affect their interpretation, their perception, and understanding. That's where a person becomes lukewarm. Now they're in a process of decay and not even know it. Because when this begins to happen, there, I can tell you that there's a demon ready to come in. And he's a lifeless spirit needing the life. And when he enters a life, he begins to bring death to that life. This is where the devil comes to disarm the soldiers of God <clears throat> and replace the new man with the old man again. His purpose is to disarm us. James chapter 1. James 1. <clears throat> In verse 21. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Are you going to give it? Are you going to teach it? Because if you're not getting it to teach it, then what's the sense? Amen? Now we've got to practice it. <laughs> Verse 21, let's speak it. Therefore what? Therefore means you've got to cooperate. If you do this, Amen? God will do that. Therefore, lay aside all what? Filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul or what? Convert your soul. So he's saying the word will convert your soul. But again, you can read the word, speak the word, but it still needs to be watered. But be doers. Of the word, not hearers only deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, and he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty. What's the perfect law of liberty? Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow. Amen? 
deny yourself. That means that you got to pull out the sword and fight because you can't follow without a fight. It's amazing how many people think that they're going to follow. Oh, Jesus is just going to lead me. He'd love to. But if you're not doing your part, how can he do his part? Amen? You heard about the story about the person waiting on the Lord, right? Amen. I'm waiting on the Lord. <laughs> really? Remember when the floods came and everything? The guy, the boat, the ship, helicopter, and everything else came to him? And, he's, and he ended up dying before the Lord. He said, what happened? I've been waiting on you. He said, who do you think sent you the four-wheel drive, the boat, the ship, and the helicopter? It was me, you dummy. I had much more for you to do down there, but you wanted to do it your way. Amen. He must have known Frank Sinatra. He did a song called My Way. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, verse 25, speak it with me. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, what's the law of liberty? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. And continue. Oh, man, that word continue. Say continue. continue. Say it again. Continue. continue. That means you don't look back. You stay focused and you keep continuing. And don't let your emotions dictate. Oh, but I'm tired. Oh, Gucci goo. But I don't feel good. I don't this. See, three eyes and you're out. Amen? And continues, he's steadfast, alert, vigilant. Continues in this, is not a what? Forgetful hearer, but a what? Doer of the work. In other words, he cooperates. This one will be what? Blessed. Blessed in what he does. Praise God. If anyone among you thinks he's religious and doesn't bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religious is what? Useless. Useless. So the word is what converts the soul. Amen? So that you can, I can interpret and understand what the Spirit is saying. Living a life of responding, not of reacting. Living a life of yes, not justifying. Not making decisions in how I feel. So let me ask you this. Is offense going to hinder your conversion? Yeah. Always. Always. People make decisions because how I feel. Unconverted soul. Haven't reached the level. I'm telling you, I run into many people have been, man, they've been around the anointing, they've been around everything, but they refuse to let go of things. Amen. And when they refuse to let go of things, that conversion cannot be completed. Everybody okay? Yes. He brew. I brewed this morning. Did you? You know, this is vital information today. Amen. Vital. One of the things you don't want to do is associate with people that aren't converted. It'll rub off on you. The spirits in them will start stealing from you, and you don't even know it. That's why it says, do not be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Why do people still go to the same people, places, and things, calling themselves Christians and want to be free? Man, you're pure, you're, you're holy, you're filled with the Spirit of God now. You're not to associate. Yeah, you do it at work, you do it at places, yes. But if you hang out too long, well, I'm just going over to watch a football game with them. Oh, really? You're going to get bit like crazy. Unless God sent you. If God don't send you, you don't go. But he never sends you alone. He sends you with another brother or sister. To overcome. Oh, God sent me to the crack house the other day. Really? The guy's still in there. 
God does not want you to associate. I get a lot of people that tell me, oh, Jesus sent me here, sent me there. No, he didn't. Your soul's not even halfway converted yet. You're still thinking carnally. See, because when the soul is not converted, those emotions dictate decisions. Well, I really felt like, well, the word says it, the word says it. Well, yeah, well, you ain't interpreting something called God's time. Hebrews 4, verse 1. Therefore, which means if you'll do this, since a promise remains of entering his rest, oh, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Hebrews 4, verse 2. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with what? Faith, no connection. And those who heard it. For we have believed, for we who have believed to enter that rest, as he said. I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he was spoken in a certain place on the seventh day in this way, and God res rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in this place. Now, was Jesus cooperating with God? Amen. So he was, those were his works. Amen. He says all things were made from him and through him and for him. So he was cooperating with the Father to fulfill. The Word was cooperating with the Father to fulfill. Amen? And again, in this place, they shall not enter my rest, since therefore it remains that some must enter it. And those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? Disobedience. So they heard the Word, the seed was planted, but they rejected it. And again, he designates a certain day, saying in David, today, after such a long time as it has been said, if you will what? Hear. Hear his voice. Do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken of another day. Therefore, it remains, therefore, a rest for the people of God. That's a level of conversion. For he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works, as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Now, he's, now he gives a conclusion. For the what? For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the what? The soul and the spirit and the joints and marrow. And is the what? discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow. And intents of the heart. There was a rest of full trust by cooperation to the spirit and conversion of the soul, which purifies the heart to release the expression of Christ in the spirit. No longer living out of the soulish emotional direction, but out of the spirit. Unless the soul is converted and reached that conversion, people will do the same thing over, over, and over. Psalm 24. When there's a lack of conversion, individuals begin to look at what they've done for God. That's their work. Instead of cooperating does everybody understand that? There's a difference of doing things for God and cooperating with God. Because people can go out and do things. Look at how many people are coming to the Lord. Remember in the Word of God, it said, many will come to me saying, Lord, I did this, I did that, I cast out devil. So they were doing the th works of God, but they weren't obeying God. So there's a difference. You can come out and do all of these things for God. but not cooperate with what he asks us to do. Oh, but it's in the Word. It says do this, but God didn't tell you to do that. Amen. Does everybody understand? There's a difference. How many people are going to find out that they were successful in the wrong assignment? 
terrible thing to be. Psalm 24, verse 3. Who may ascend in the hill of the Lord, and who may stand in his holy place? That means connected. Who may talk with him face to face? He who has a what? Clean hands. And a what? Pure heart. There is the key. Who has not lifted up his what? Lifted up his what? His soul to a what? Idol. Why? Because that is delaying, interrupting, or taking away that conversion that's been reached. Nor sworn deceitfully, he or she shall receive blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from God of the, his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation to those who seek him, who seek your face. There's a difference. Clean hands, rejecting agreements are the enemy. A pure heart by converted soul. No shortcuts in conversion. Amen? We've got to learn or we get burned again. Let me tell you what becomes idols. Emotions. Emotions become people's idols. And they don't even realize it. They can't even discern it. They can't interpret it because the soul doesn't reach that level of conversion. James chapter 3. James 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 313. Everybody get touched by the Lord today? Amen. Sweet presence of God. Anybody get freed up today? Yes. <laughs> Deliverance, freedom, healing, yeah. refreshing, not refleshing. Amen. 313, let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works, which means what? Cooperation are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy, oh, is that going to interfere with conversion? Yes. And self-seeking in your hearts. Do not boast and lie against the truth. You know, I've heard many people fall, backslide, because something happened in their life. They might have lost a loved one. Their dog got hit by a car. I don't know. Some trauma happened in her life, and the enemy has convinced that individual to go back to using, to medication, to whatever it is. Run into the phone instead of the throne, running to past associations, whatever it is. And the reason for that is because of that open door of lack of conversion. Amen? But if you have a, a bitter envy, self-seeking in your hearts, me first. Do not boast and lie against the truth that says deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. This wisdom does not descend from above, but it's earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. Wow. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion. Now let me ask you this. If the soul hasn't reached that place of, con of conversion, Will confusion come to an individual easier? Yes. Yes. That's why he comes and brings confusion so he can steal while you're confused. Then you're going around butt, 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 butt. And you're no longer the head, you're the tail. But the wisdom that is from above is first, well, wait a minute, for where, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, in other words, submitting, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. 
Wisdom from above is established with a converted soul. You get more wisdom. Why? Because how can you interpret what God is trying to say? As you begin to interpret more, you're getting more and more wisdom. Does everybody get this? We ask for wisdom. How does God give you wisdom? He starts converting your soul more by your cooperation with the word of God. How many times have you asked for wisdom for something that just doesn't seem to come? Because of lack of conversion, lack of interpretation. How can you understand what God is saying if your soul isn't converted because that's your interpreter? Now there's, this, now there's a difference of interpretation through the gifts of the Spirit. Amen? Why? Because that's associated with your spirit, not your soul. That's why when you pray in the Spirit, your soul don't know nothing. Thank God. But your spirit. So there's a difference of the gifts of the Spirit. Does everybody understand that? Because it's associated with your spirit. But God's trying to get our soul converted so that we become one in the fullness of the stature of Christ Jesus. Amen? See, when you and I take off of this place, when the Lord calls us home, amen, your soul of the old man is gone. The old man is gone. He goes back to the dust. The new man in the soul is joined together in a purified, pure heart, which is now the heart of Christ. Pure. There's no more goofiness. There's no more worldly deserves. There's no fears. There's no what ifs. There's nothing. There's just pure love of God with the mind of Christ, like mindedness, willing to do whatever it takes. Is everybody all right? Oh, happy days. So the wisdom from above is established with a converted soul. Confusion causes shatter, causes more, unconfu more confusion in an unconverted soul because they haven't reached the level of conversion and they haven't reached an, an ability to interpret and understand, resulting in lack of rest and anxiousness. Anxiousness. That's why people are anxious. Because of lack of conversion. Is there, is there rest and anxiousness? No. Is there rest and fear? No. Matthew 6. Oh, hallelujah. Training for reigning today. In verse 19. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Did anybody ever tell you, oh, God knows my heart? When I wonder, oh, God knows my heart. I don't need to know anything. God does know their heart. The problem is they don't. Amen. When a person has to say, well, God knows my heart, they're just trying to justify it trying to reason, trying to convince themselves they're okay. The moment you think you're okay, you've already fallen. <laughs> None of us is okay. Amen? Matthew 6 and 19, let's speak it. Do not lay up what? For yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves Treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where there is not a break in and steal. Thieves break in. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. Say it again. Where your treasure is, there your heart is also. What you do more is where your heart is at. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of light. Or oh, if your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is what? Bad, your whole body will be filled with darkness. If therefore the light that is in you becomes what? Dark. How great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. See, there's that fight within. That's a battle between two worlds. And you're caught in the middle. There's a pull on your soul. No one can serve two masters, for either he will 
hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, which means money, because that's how the enemy influences everyone here in this world. Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life or what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body or what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? So the battle between two worlds is pulling at your soul to reach, to, God is trying to bring us to a place to reach a level of conversion, and the devil is trying to delay us from conversion or steal what has been converted. Amen? We want our heart to be set above not on self, it's set on the Lord. So we see that many people fall into materialism and so forth. We want to be about the kingdom of business. In other words, what you put first will determine where your heart's at. Third John, and a couple more scriptures. Third John. Third John, verse 2. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may what? Prosper in a couple things. In all things. And be in what? Health. Ooh. Just as your soul prospers. So can you prosper in all things and be in good health if your soul isn't prospered? No. It's not been converted. It hasn't reached a level of conversion. For I rejoiced greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So we prosper in all things in health as the soul is converted to the character of Christ. See, there's too many mixed. There's an, a mixed anointing and there's a mixed soul. There's a mixed soul where there's still that tearing in, in, inside. And these demons, are these lifeless spirits are still feeding off of us. Amen. And, and it's starving the conversion. See, where there's the demonic force, it's always preventing conversion. It's trying to starve conversion, delay conversion. Listen, the devil doesn't come with, um, when you're down and out, he doesn't come with bow and arrow. He comes with a harpoon. Amen? He comes to kill. He tries to steal. Amen? He tries to destroy, but he wants to come and kill. But the first thing he wants to do is steal your identity. See, a person's identity is flip-flop when there's an unconverted soul. They're still looking for identity and don't even know it. Titus 3. Titus 3. Titus 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceful, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, and deceived serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of what? Regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. And having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. And this is a faithful saying. These things I want you to affirm constantly. 
that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works, which is good cooperation. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid what? Foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and what? Useless. Why? Because it prevents conversion or delays it. Reject the devices man after the first and second amomination, knowing that such a person is warped in sinning, being self-condemned. In other words, avoid those people. Good habits can become affected by bad company. Amen? After reaching a level of conversion, we must maintain and continue growth with the regeneration of the Holy Spirit, avoiding the dismantling of the conversion process. And we'll close at 2 Timothy chapter 2. Oh, happy days. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 21. Everybody there? Everybody okay? Are you blessed? Highly flavored? Let's grow for it. Verse 21. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from the latter. He will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. How do you become cleansed? Starts off with repentance. Why? Because repentance washes me and you with the blood. That's cleansing through the blood. But then there is cleansing through the word. That's why the word says wash with the word. Amen? So there's a spiritual cleansing through the blood and the word of God. Because the word of God will bring conviction. Amen? Don't wait for conviction. Search it out. Because sometimes if you wait, it's too late. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. All right, let's go. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he'll be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Now he explains. Flee also what? Youthful lusts. But pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure, well, if they're calling on the Lord out of a pure heart, has their souls reached the level of conversion? Yes. yes. Yeah. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel but be what? Gentle to all, able to teach, patience, patient. In humility, correcting those who are in opposition of God, perhaps and will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and get converted. And that they may come to their senses. So, wait a minute, you got to think about this. So, if a soul has not reached a level of conversion, are their senses clear, tainted? Amen. They're not clear enough. They're not sharp. And I'm not talking about physical senses. I'm talking about spiritual senses, which is called discernment. That they may come to their senses, that they may come to the discernment and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Remember, the enemy will do everything he can to delay your conversion or to steal what's been converted. Amen? Amen. That's his job. He does it very well. But he who is in us is greater than he is in the world. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We are more than the conquerors. He is our fulfillment. We don't look back, we go forward. It doesn't matter what you've done. You're a new creation right now, this moment, this second. As long as you're repentant for what you've done, expose what you've done, and command those things to, that influence you to leave you. You're to believe, receive, and execute. Amen? That's our responsibility. Father, we thank you for your word. And we repent right now, Lord, for any association that would bring any delay of conversion. We command every demonic spirit to loose us and to leave us in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and go to the pit and not return. Every area, Lord, that has caused delay, 
or misleading in our lives because of the lack of conversion, we ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace. And put us back in position so that conversion continues, so that we are reconnected, restored, refreshed, and rebooted as a new creation in Christ. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen.